Now, one interesting thing we can do at this point is ask ourselves, what is the distribution of our estimate of w? But before we do that, let's consider why it might be useful. So firstly, since this is Bayesian machine learning, we know that everything is a random variable, and therefore everything has a distribution. Although we aren't doing Bayesian machine learning just yet, this will help us set up some good intuitions for the rest of the course. Another reason this is practical. Suppose, for instance, we find that our estimate of w has a large variance. That means we aren't too sure of its value. But if it has a small variance, then we are more confident. Knowing what kind of distribution a w hat will have is also useful, since that will tell us the shape of that distribution and where the probability exists. So that being said, let's consider how we might find the distribution of w hat. As a simple starter exercise, let's consider what the expected value of w hat is. We'll begin with our expression for w hat, which is the ratio we found in the previous lecture. We know that for our purposes, x is not random, but always given. On the other hand, y does have randomness because it depends on epsilon, which is random. Therefore, we can move the expected value inside the sum around y sub i only. And thus, what we need to know now is the expected value of y sub i. In order to find this, we simply replace y sub i with our model for y sub i, which is that it's w times x sub i plus epsilon sub i. We know that epsilon sub i has mean 0, and the expected value is the mean, and therefore that part is zero. What's left is w times x sub i, both of which are not random. Note that this is one part where the classical method deviates from the Bayesian method. In the Bayesian method, w has a distribution, but in the classical method, w is fixed. In any case, we can see that the expected value of y sub i is just w times x sub i. If we plug this back in, we get the sum of w times x sub i squared divided by the sum of x sub i squared. Since w doesn't depend on i, we can bring that outside the sum. We can see that we just have the sum of x sub i squared divided by the same thing, and therefore that ratio is 1. And thus, the expected value of w hat is just w, which makes sense. As a side note, this shows us that w hat is an unbiased estimator of w. Okay, so now let's consider the more difficult exercise, which is finding not just the mean of w hat, but its whole distribution. To start, we'll plug in our model for y sub i once again, which is w times x sub i plus epsilon sub i. This time, we don't have any expected value, so we just expand the terms. As before, the first term ends up having the sum of x sub i squared over the sum of x sub i squared, which is 1, so the first term is just w. The second term is a bit more complicated. Note that the bottom summation is completely separate from the top, so we can factor it out. To clean things up a bit, let's call this c. So big C is 1 over the sum of all the x sub i's squared. Now what we have is basically a linear combination of epsilon sub i's. If we were to write this out in full, we'd have big C times x1 times epsilon 1 plus big C times x2 times epsilon 2 and so forth. What we can see right away is that w hat is the sum of normal random variables. And we know from our previous studies that the sum of normals is still normal. And therefore, we know that w hat has a normal distribution. Furthermore, we know that the normal distribution is completely specified by its mean and variance. We've already found its mean, which is w. So now all we need to do is find its variance. As a side note, it's easy to see from this that the mean of w hat is w. If we take the expected value of both sides, we end up with the expected value of the sum of epsilons, 
which all have expected value zero, so we just end up with w. In any case, let's move on to the variance. One identity that will be useful to review is what happens to the variance of a random variable when you multiply it by a constant. The answer is that if the variance of x is sigma squared, then the variance of ax is a squared times sigma squared. As an exercise, if you don't know how that works, you can derive it yourself. So let's suppose we take our expression from before, and we take the variance of both sides. The left side is what we want, and so we just need to simplify the right side. Another important fact to recall is that all the epsilons are iid. That means independent and identically distributed. When we take the variance of the sum of random variables that are independent, it just becomes the sum of individual variances. Recall that this is not true in general. In general, we would need to account for covariances as well. But if the random variables are independent, then the covariances are zero, so we are just left with the sum of variances. Furthermore, we know that w is fixed, so its variance is zero. Thus, all we have left is the variance of the weighted sum of the epsilons. From here, it helps to expand the sum once again. So we have big C times x1 times epsilon 1, plus big C times x2 times epsilon 2, and so forth. We know that the variance of each of the epsilons is just sigma squared, so we can plug that in. The result is c squared times x1 squared times sigma squared, plus c squared times x2 squared times sigma squared, and so forth. Note that we can factor out the c squared and the sigma squared, and we get the sum of the x sub i's each squared. Finally, we can see that the variance is big C squared times the sum of each x sub i squared times sigma squared. However, c itself is 1 over the sum of each x sub i squared, so this can be simplified. What we end up with is that the variance of w hat is just sigma squared divided by the sum of all the x sub i's each squared. Now, let's think about why this result makes sense. The mean obviously makes sense. The expected value of w hat is w, which is good. But why is this the variance? One thing it suggests is that as we collect more and more data, the sum of all the x sub i squared will increase, and therefore the variance of w hat will decrease. That makes perfect sense. As we collect more data, we become more confident in our estimate of w. 